So yeah, yeah, great. Uh, yeah, I would like to talk about uh, Web ODV, which is uh, the online version of uh, the uh, Ocean Data View software. Uh, moment, one moment. Oh no, sorry. I want to talk about quality control. <laughs> okay, good. Sorry, that was a joke. So. Um, so I want to present a, a new online app for ocean temperature quality control. And this is an AI approach. And uh, this is a teamwork together with my colleague Mohamed, who's over there. And uh, we worked on this topic now for a couple of years. And, uh, but I, I would say it's, it's still a bit uh, preliminary. We are still in an exploration phase. So, so let's see. But it has a potential for sure. So the goal of this project was to set up a, a web application where oceanographers can do quality control on ocean temperature data. And this is the app, and it's, it's, it's online, it's operational, it's running um, under the uh, URL mvre.awc.cloud.rv.de. Uh, it's a bit long, uh, but this was in, in the frame of this uh, MVRE project. And uh, we, had a, we have a couple of um, documentation there um, and, 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 and some slides so you can read about how, how to use it. Um, yeah, it's about quality control of ocean data, which means we want to find anomalies in data, detect errors. And uh, actually, it's a very simple app. So it's, a, it's just a three-step procedure. So you just upload your data, then it's processed in the background, and uh, then as soon as it's finished, you can download the data quality controlled. But I have to say it's still, let's say, in, in better mode. So please, uh, use it, test it, and uh, report back to us. Um, and, and, and don't use it blindly, OK? OK, so uh, the input data. Um, we started really simple. So it's a CSV file, and we have a it, it's a column-oriented file, and it's mostly about CTD data, also maybe bottle data, but ocean profile data. And we have here a couple of columns which are needed, like a profile number, longitude, latitude, the depth, and the temperature. Other columns are optional. So this is how it looks like. So you can upload the data in this way. Yeah, and uh, what do we want to detect? We want to detect um, anomalies. I don't know, sometimes I, we can call it errors, sometimes only maybe suspicious data. Um, and uh, we call it spike and suspect gradient. These are the two kind of features we are interested in. So after uploading and processing the data, we get the data back from, from the app. And what we did is we include two extra columns. We call these columns TRADQF and MLQF. And you see these extra columns here on the right. And TRADQF means traditional quality control or classical quality control. And here we apply some, some classical checks, uh, which are, for example, uh, very simple range checks um, to detect um, anomalies. And then we also apply the machine learning to even improve the results from the classical checks. So what is the AI actually doing? What you see here um, highlighted is where the, the classical check detects a spike and it gives it a flag, a four. A four is a spike. And the machine learning checks it again and gives it a zero and says it's, it's good, actually. So the machine learning checks again the results from the classical procedures and decides again, okay, do I accept that, what the classical algorithm says, or do I change it? But how can the machine learning knows, know about, about that and correcting it somehow? And the answer is, mm, we trained it with human expertise. And therefore, we have to look at the classical approach. And the classical approach we, we also heard it, for example, yesterday from Marina and others is, uh, yeah, a, a profile is coming into the, the system, then traditional quality control checks are applied, like range checks, 
And if this profile is considered as, as fully good, it goes into the archive, if we detect at least one suspicious sample, it goes into the visual quality control, and a human expert looks on this profile and looks on the suspicious samples, and then the human expert decides, okay, do I accept that, or do I maybe change it back to good? And this is, was an approach uh, that, that uh, was uh, done at, at RV. And we trained a neural network with exactly that, what a human is doing, checking again the classical flags and, and then decide, okay, is it really bad or maybe I change it back to good. So we trained a neural network to, to really imitate the human and we put it into this pipeline to support the human. And, and the idea is, of course, a workload reduction for the human, but still the human is needed for, let's say, final checks or corrections, however they want. So yeah, um, maybe uh, I, I don't go into the details here about the evaluation and the skill of the model, but the crucial point, so here you, you can see the confusion matric, matrices on the left the, from the classical checks, on the right from the classical checks plus the AI checks. And the crucial point are the false negatives, which means this is where the classical check says, oh, it's bad, but actually it's good. And on the left you see for the false negatives, the classic check found 2,400 roughly, and then we applied the AI on it, and the AI turned roughly 2,000 back to good and put it into the TP, the true positive, into the good. So it's exactly doing that what also a human would do because this is uh, what it has learned. And uh, this is a real workload reduction, but still, please, it's a bit preliminary, so we are still testing and, and doing some more checks to, to make it uh, really more mature and re reliable. Okay, so how, how we did all that. So we, we started with a large Arctic database we have at Avi. It's called the UDASH. It contains more than 280,000 temperature and salinity profiles from different sources. Um, it's an Arctic data set. So this works only for Arctic data at the moment. This has been quality controlled by uh, our ocean experts. And uh, so that means we had a large labeled data set to train the algorithm. Also, we um, implemented all the uh, classical quality control checks in Python, Jupyter Notebooks. Um, we set up the neural network, which is in this case a MLP model. And then we did all the typical AI procedures, training, validation, evaluation, and we created the app and uh, implemented everything uh, in the web. Okay, so yeah, for the future, yeah, um, this is all really new and fresh, um, but uh, we really think it, it has potential. Um, yeah, we, but of course we have to finalize everything, make it more mature, reliable, do more tests, and so we want to also put everything on GitHub, also the code for training, for evaluation, everything. So not only the app, which is very easy to use, but also the code. We want to apply it on salinity. Um, so there's a colleague at Avi, which who I'm working now together, and we are looking now on salinity. Of course, improving algorithms, and uh, somehow, of course, the end goal is to implement that into the community, CDataNet, EmodeNet, iQuad, and uh, there are other errors. Um, like statistical screening errors, how they are called. It's like uh, comparing uh, data with climatologies. And so it, this is, could also be um, used to develop more uh, AI algorithms and use other data sets, other QC operators. So yeah, there's a long way to go probably to make it really skillful and, and, and useful, but I think it's possible, so thank you. Thank you very much, Sebastian. Finally, we're talking about AI. I'm so happy. Um, questions? questions. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, actually, I have, I had two questions, but you already answered one about comparing to climatologists, which is obvious like s step. And second question, uh, you consider it the stabilization of the profile and uh, de density inversion could be, could generate some errors from the eight AI point of view. Uh, sorry, ca can you please repeat? I, I didn't get it. Uh, are you consider it to check for stabilization? Stabilization. Yeah. Ah, uh, you are talking about something like um, density inversion. Correct. Things like that. Yeah. So this is in included in in this uh, traditional quality check pipeline. There are checks for uh, density inversion. But um, as far as we know, it includes no visual control. It's it's purely uh, uh, algorithm and it was accepted from, from this classical algorithm if there is a density inversion accepted. Okay. So which, which means if there's no human in, uh, um, uh, influence, uh, the, the AI has nothing to learn. So we, then we can use the classical check. Yeah, I, I'm asking because when we were preparing the latest uh, World Ocean Atlas, we saw some effects from automatic stabilizations which needed further intervention. Yeah, I mean, if we have that mm -hmm. in a data set labeled, fine, we, we can use Good. it. Thank you very much. Hello. I saw a rock curve, a bit square. Is it risky in terms of overfitting or not? So the rock curve? Yes, it's a bit uh, squared. Uh, Isn't uh, too overfitting? I mean, um, good question. Um, I mean, we, uh, we um, of course, we considered um, overfitting. So we did a validation with a loss curve. So, I mean, the, the model was learning, and at a certain point, the, the loss uh, was increasing again. So, so we found the optimum. And uh, so I, I would say, I, I don't know, I cannot rule out. Um, but, but normally, according to, to all these steps, there should be no overfitting. But do you think, or it, it, I, I'm not aware of it. Is it a sign of overfitting if it's, if it's this shape? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's also a sign of, of being very skillful if, if, we have, if we have this. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I've got a mic over here. Um, have you been able to pull out any insights from the change in false negatives of what it, what it is that the classical checks were missing and what's being picked up now? Uh, unfortunately not. And uh, because this UDASH data set has been created a, a couple of years ago at, at AVI, so the, the problem was we, we just took it as it is, as a kind of truth. But I mean, of course, we, we looked into profiles and for, for a certain number of profiles we were really wondering what's wrong here and and, and this is something, yeah, I mean, we also need the, the experts to, to work on that. And especially if we think about things like, like, like that, it would be um, ideal to go into a loop, like uh, the so-called adaptive learning, which means we have an expert which checks the results. The results are checked. They go again into the training. The model improves and so on to, to make it final and... Uh, Okay, thank you, Sebastian. We have to move on to the next presentation.